Hello guys, welcome back. So, obviously today didn't go super great. Um, I have actually done research over the years of, you know, why do some of us have belief in a god or in a god at all, and why do some people tend towards atheism? And, you know, everybody thinks they have the right answer, but as far as I can see, backed by science, it's some kind of evolutionary advantage. But nobody can explain the real evolutionary advantage to belief versus atheism because both naturally occur in our species. And as far as I know, we're the only species with some kind of spirituality. Is it a security blanket? Is it a comforting thought when we know we're powerless and kind of alone in the universe? I really don't know. I know this is a cheerful channel. But you know... I've I've gone through a lot in my life, and as I was looking up atheists, no surprise, a lot of prominent atheists became that way because, um, as Stephen Fry said, you know, they asked him, they said, what would you ever say to God? And he said, how dare you? And he pointed out the same belief I struggled with, that if there's this perfect, benevolent, loving in God, how dare you? You know, with children getting cancer and stuff like that. If you've ever had family members die of cancer and lost multiple family members to cancer, you're like, what the fuck, ancestor pissed this god off? It's the most fucking horrible thing you can go through, you know? There's no way I can believe in a benevolent, loving sky daddy who loves us all having seen this. Um, I I would rather, if you told me go into a cancer ward or have to shoot myself, I'd, I'd shoot myself because it's just, it's, it's fucking horrible to watch the people you love, you know, die by inches. And at the time, I, I knew their god clearly wasn't helping them, but I was working with, of all things, I was working with the voodoo on Loa, and I would do these rituals, and I would work myself to exhaustion now did the voodoo rituals or as far as you can do as a non-initiate help or did medicine science help we'll we'll never know but after a while you know the baron told me there's there's nothing we can do share you know it's is it's his time because he gave up once once it seems like people keep going and keep going and keep going on sheer willpower and then after enough human dignities have been taken from them, uh, you know, a lot of people give up, and that that's, that's hard to watch. It's why I'm always so worried about my friend that has the cancer, because, you know, they're fantastic, they're miracle people, and then one day it's like somebody shut the lights off, and they give up, and, and they, they, they've been alive for years, and then you just lose them just like that. And... You know, that's that's fucking hard to go through, and that makes you question the benevolence of any deity or the existence of any deity. Not just some all-knowing, all-powerful god, but, you know, any god. Why didn't any god of the thousands that are out there step in? Why doesn't any god of all the thousands that are out there step in when priests harm children or women are attacked or men are attacked or anybody is hurt? Why don't they step in with a fucking ham sandwich when somebody's starving to death? Um, why do they let cancer exist and all the other horrible diseases? And the problem of evil is one of those things that even the great theologians haven't been able to, to, you know, come to terms with. And we get some really weak sauce answers. It's God's mysterious way. God had a plan, you know? And if you've seen people die from a horrible disease, you're like, what part of the fucking plan was that, you know? Um, and you'll be surprised at how fast it'll change your priorities. I used to be, you know, before my father got sick and I started to see him lose all of his dignity and humanity, I would have been very much against animal testing. Now I would do it myself. I, I looked at the doctor he said, you know, he was being cautious because at the time everybody was up in arms about, you know, animal testing. He said, well, we're going to have to use a drug, but I have to let you know because it's hospital rules. We have to test it, you know, on animals. I said, you give me the damn animals and teach me how I'll test that myself. <laughs> he just looked at me. I said, no offense, but I'm pretty sure I'm an atheist at this point. He said, most of us in this, you know, this word are. Most of the doctors and nurses became very devout atheists. Um, because there's no amount of religious woo that, that makes up for seeing people just 
die and why do some get a miracle and recover and some people don't? It's not fucking fair. So, you know, and it's not fucking fair. And the believers, you know, don't seem to be able to help the fact that they have belief. You know, and I'm one of those unfortunate hybrids that I got just enough belief that it's torture and just enough atheism that it fucks up the belief. So I'm this uncomfortable, unhappy hybrid somewhere in the middle. And I have tried everything. I have tried retreats. I have tried everything to work on faith. And a lot of times it's just like the atheist part wins. Let's say I'm half atheist, half believer. The atheist part wins. And I go, really, man? Look all around you. Do you see any evidence of a uh, benevolent God? Look at all you've been through. Look at all the things that have been done to you and to the other members of your family. Do you really, really believe in any God at all? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Not really, because if these gods exist, they, they let a lot of fucking shit go down. And that, that's a kind of hard thing. But if you're going to be a grown-up heathen or pagan or witch or whatever, you don't get to play the game of just blame the God they said was our powerful. You get to blame your gods, too. You get to point the finger at them, too, and go, Hey, where the fuck were you when my family was dying? Where were you when all these horrible things were happening to members of my family? Where were you? And they, they usually don't have an answer, right? Which is why I'm starting to think there are imaginary friends. And I, I get it. The evolutionary benefit may be as simple as having a security blanket to hold on to at night because we know we live in a world full of chaos and you know it it, it doesn't make me angry towards people that have have good belief and good faith but i'm like i just don't see given all my health issues given all the people i've seen dying cancer wards given all the other hell i've been through in my life i just i can't see any reason to believe in any god being benevolent or merciful and that includes loki or odin and the terrible thing is since i'm kind of this hybrid i could feel at certain parts during the day guys that i could have just slipped back into belief right right like at my imaginary friends would have been with me and i thought but you know these imaginary friends if they're gods they have some kind of power right you, you, that's why you worship a god why haven't they ever done anything to help me help flies you know odin likes to say god's never you know cured your eyesight guards never cure the arthritis cripples you up and i said yeah you never have either and i'm like maybe odin is like the quasi atheistic part of my brain that's just kind of pointing me in the right direction maybe the norse gods or the atheistic part of my brain going okay i'm gonna dress up as a god and I'm going to walk you into science land. And it's going to be sad, but your dad was an atheist too. So, <laughs> yeah, my dad was, was weird. He went he went to church because it made my mom happy. And it was just a, re, a obligation in a fucking unfortunate Catholic family that it was hypocrisy they ever stepped foot in church. But he was an atheist. He, he didn't believe that, you know, anything happened when you die. He really didn't believe in prayer. Um, he really didn't believe anything was coming, you know, good coming to us. And yet he raised his children in this religion because the pressure of his family. And because my mom was the exact polar opposite, she believed in everything. Um, and so maybe it's, it's part nature and nurture. Maybe that's why I'm this weird hybrid of believing in everything one second. And then the next second, I'm like, this is all horseshit. You know it. Because my dad was very much, if science and logic couldn't prove it even though he wasn't a scientist he was an accountant of all things it didn't fucking exist now he was a horrible human being so don't you know don't ever play the atheist or wonderful human beings with me there have been atheists that committed great atrocities and so whatever you're going into go in with your eyes wide open don't go into atheism thinking oh atheists never you know do this in a school or something Read about what some of the most horrific atheistic leaders in all of mankind have done to whole groups of people. Read about the genocide. It's not belief or lack thereof that makes a person into a monster. They just are. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of, you know, unhappy. I think part of the reason I'm favoring towards atheism now is there are always fucking busybodies and everything, atheism included. But really, at the end of the day. 
what do you do? Tell each other you can't not believe in this way. It doesn't even make sense. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you can be like, yeah, fuck you. Um, you know, and that's the thing. Um, and there are so many self-righteous busybodies that have run up to me recently. It's just, it's pushed me towards atheism. I'm like, if a loving, benevolent Loki, Odin, or anyone exists, why the fuck aren't they stepping in? Why they, why the fuck aren't they grabbing these people and physically stopping them? I mean, when I had belief, I would have told you Loki had power over electronics and everything else. Why the fuck didn't Loki, you know, shut these people down? Why the fuck didn't Odin shut them down? If it's a test, it's a fucking cruel one, man. I'll tell you that right now. Sip of coffee. And so what I did today, and you won't see it because the camera's narfed. I did try to film this for you guys. Is I, I told myself I will treat myself as a goddess. So I started by cleaning my sink and I cleaned my cabinets, my stove. I made everything look pretty. I don't have very good health, so I couldn't get too far. And I made the mistake of taking off my shoes, and it's getting colder. We're going somewhere with this. I have, since childhood, had um, arthritis all through my body. And lately, I don't know if it's my age, diet, fucking 2020, I don't know. My arthritis in my feet has really acted up. And if you have never had that, it will make you think you are going through the crucifixion with Jesus. It, it is fucking hideously painful. And if you could choose death at that time from instant as euthanasia, you would. And, you know, it's like, well, if these supposed deities exist and they see me struggling with my faith and they see me struggling with all this pain, why not help me? Why just kind of stand there and kind of shrug helplessly? And what actually pushed me towards the atheism, too, was I was on this pagan one of those pagan self-glorifying things. And they all they all answer to the old man and they all write all these stories, right? And you can tell they're all very in love with their their ability to write. And he portrayed the gods as just standing there helplessly and crying as people, like, starve to death during the Christmas season. I'm like, how about a fucking sandwich, man? These gods supposedly built this universe? Can't they fucking manifest a sandwich? It's some weak sauce. And I don't know, get off your ass if you're seeing these gods crying and get out there and do some shit. Go work at a soup kitchen. Fucking become a renegade. Go out and get food, even if it's fucking terrible stuff from a dollar store. And go feed people. Feed one person. Make a difference. Just don't sit there and be self-righteous and go, Yeah, these people are starving to death because the Christians won't do it. No, you're not getting off your ass either. No, you know, we, I'll, I'll be straight with you guys, 99.9 9 to the billionth power problems on this planet are because of humans. The gods aren't running around committing crimes, humans are doing it. We don't have monkeys starting wars, well, we do, considering what species we are, but, you know, we're the ones that start the wars, we're the ones that let our members of our species starve, and I'm not saying you or me, people that are too powerless to have the wherewithal to go out and feed other people. I'm saying the people with the means just are fucking indifferent because that's our species, man. We're a bitch. And it'll always be that way because we're a species of animal and we fucking hate each other because we're all competition to each other for the right to breed, for the right to have territory, for the right to have whatever we want. And any time we get threatened, we flash those primate fangs and we go after each other. So it's just, it's the more shitty heathens I meet, the less I believe in the gods and the more it pushes me towards atheism. And they'll probably go and write on their little blog or whatever about how how I was never a real heathen or real witch or real Lokian or real, you know, how much I want to take a G word and fucking kill people with it. And I, I'm like, you know what? Good. Win. Have your imaginary friend, because all the shit I've seen in my life is why I don't, you know, don't always hold on to my belief so well. Um, it it kind of reminds me of, you know, during childhood, we all remember having imaginary friends. Most of us did. <sighs> you ever remember that one little bitch in school that just because she saw you had an imaginary friend and everyone else did, and for whatever reason, wiring in her brain, religious upbringing, she didn't? You remember that little bitch that she would tell other kids that their imaginary friend came over to her house and loved her more? And then you would have to watch the fallout 
Or maybe you went through it yourself of arguing with your imaginary friend and your imaginary friend would be going, but I didn't go over. And the more she insisted, the more she insisted your imaginary friend's story may have changed from either she's lying or maybe I like you both or whatever. It's it's kind of like that to me. It's like it's like being back in grade school and we all have these imaginary friends and people are just arguing about how the best way to treat your imaginary friend and the imaginary friend loves me more and I just I am capable of caring anymore <laughs> I, I I just I can't anymore guys and you know it's because of human nature I think and it's because we're getting near 1 million dead worldwide with COVID it's all that and I'm going to be honest with you. It, what's the point of faith anymore? At least to me, I just, I don't have it. A lot of it is the shitty behavior I've seen over the decades from people of all religions. I'm like, wow, if you have a God, you obviously don't talk to him. And how come your God can't even, you know, put some human decency in any of you? And it it just doesn't seem to happen. And the most wonderful, caring people I've usually met have been atheists. And, you know, you know, because they're not going to wait for imaginary sky friend or imaginary friend to do something for you. They're going to at least give you, you know, a common sense response. So, it, you know, there's a, a saying that Christianity died on the cross with Jesus. And I often think Lokianism died with Loki when he was bound to the, the rock because... Lokians have been some of the least compassionate motherfuckers I've ever seen, and they have a tendency to kick people when they're down. And they're, it's like he chooses the absolute worst people, the old man too, and especially that G word. Those are the absolute people in in our community. They usually are. Nine times out of ten, that's one of the absolute worst members of the community because they just... They're just horrible with it. So, yeah, if if I become a full-fledged atheist, I have humans to thank. So, <laughs> And I don't believe in humans either. A lot of atheists go, well, I believe in humans. I don't. I fucking hate the species. So I just wanted to let you guys know where I am. I, I'm going to throw that camera out. It's what I'm going to do. There's no magical sky daddy, no Loki, no demon from hell that's coming to fix it. It's just broken, and I can't afford to replace it. But if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.